I was a very, very good kid. So me becoming, going from a good kid to a very bad kid has been very surprising. <laughs> I was a bad kid. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, instead of having like a bunch of little small infractions, I saved it up and, <laughs> and married a white woman. I'm looking for Emily Gardner. She was checked in tonight. There's an infection. We put her in a medically induced coma. Coma. You should call her family. My mom kept saying, I don't know how you're ever going to make this funny. Um, because she was like, to me, it wasn't funny. Even though many funny things happened along the way, it wasn't funny to her. We were never going to take this and make it a cheap laugh for people. Like, and I think she really gets that now. They've kind of like come to terms with it a little bit. You know, the struggle that I've had with my parents is, <laughs> is a certain version of myself that I've been presenting to them for a long time. And, you know, I think this movie, which really is an expression of us as people, in a way, it's been really interesting for them because they've seen themselves through my eyes a little bit in a way that they had not before. And I've seen their in experience writing, yeah. Yeah, in writing words for them. I've seen things from their perspective. So I feel like for the first time, we've truly seen mm -hmm. each other's points of view on this. Both time and the objective distance of now we need to make this into a piece of entertainment weirdly did help a lot with, uh, we were able to kind of talk about mm -hmm our emotions in a way that felt we weren't as in them as much. We were kind of uh, a little removed from them in a good way. You don't want to be too removed, but it really helped me because I could talk about like, well, you know, Emily was feeling really terrified and upset at this point in time, and I realized I'm talking about myself, but I'm also not. So it kind of, uh, it was good. It was very therapeutic, I thought. It took the the, the power of that. Yeah. The, because it had like bad power over me. It had that thing of like, you paralyzing. know, it was, it was paralyzing. Yeah. And so having to go through and really think through everything and- For a movie and not for like your own life. You know, Yeah, like, but having to helpful. do it for the movie helped That's it. That's what I'm saying. Right, it, yeah. made it, it made it work in my own life. Because if someone too, was so. like, sit down and like, sit down and think about this experience for like four hours a day, every day, you'd be like, oh, this is a nightmare. I would be like, I don't need to, I'm fine. <laughs> my wife went through a coma and I learned nothing from it. <laughs> Let me give you some advice, come on. Love isn't easy. That's why they call it love. Really get that. I, know. I thought I could just start saying something and something small would come out. We really owe Judd. Like, he sort of took this on. There was no reason for him to take this on. There was us. no reason for him <laughs> to all. take this on. This yeah. was five years ago. But I think that's kind of what Judd does. He gives shots to people, you know? Like, I mean, he, he did that for Amy and he did that for Seth Rogen a while ago and he's done that over and over and over. And so. He gambles. Yeah. I, I, I just feel. We're so grateful to him. He really had no reason to to really believe in us. We've been very lucky. We've gotten to work with people who have really been on board with the kind of movie we wanted to make, but then we've also gotten to work with people who we've been a fan of our whole lives. Like it, It's really 100 dreams coming true at the same time.